Hi, this is Jay Nicholas and Guy Allen, and Guy's going to tie some flies here. Go ahead, Guy. Um, this is a sardina pattern, a saltwater pattern we use quite a bit. Um, it imitates a flat head herring. Now tell me uh, where you fish it. Or excuse me, a flat iron herring. Um, primarily Baja. Okay. Um, this is the, the bait fish used most often to attract um, Dorado and rooster fish. Um, tossed out by the captains to excite the fish, locate fish. Um, in the past few years, um, they've been very scarce and we've had to use other um, bait fish of a California half beak or uh, the locals call them ballyhoo. I think true ballyhoo only exists in the Atlantic. But it's a good seven to eight inch fly. Um, and those aren't too hard to cast? Not hard to cast, not hard to tie. Um, that's a good thing about them. Um, because they're all synthetic, they don't hold much water, so they're, like you say, they're easy to pick up and, and shake dry and cast. Um, and that's really important because this kind of fishing, you're casting very quickly, um, long casts, um, changing direction all the time. So, so a fly that's easy to cast is a big advantage. So I like the uh, Gamagatsu SC-17. Uh, tarpon hook. Uh, this is a three aught and seems to be a really nice strong hook, um, very sharp. Um, tying with monofilament, this is Beavis um, 0.2 millimeter. Could go bigger if you want. Um, not much to it, so, so not a lot to go. About a quarter inch back, maybe. And the first thing we're going to use is some crystal flash, just a couple strands. And this is to create a hook guard. Um, keep this from fouling. Like I say, you're picking it up and casting a lot. And the last thing you want to do is, is have a fouled fly when you're out there casting. So, so I'm, I'm tying this crystal flash down on, on the top of the hook. Um, it's going to serve a couple not, purposes. But not very many strands. Not no. very many strands, probably four or five strands. Um, so we're going to try a little UV resin thin flex. I'm astounded that those few little strands of crystal flash are going to do the job. So I've got a little bit on, I bring it out, hold it at the angle I want it, and when it sets up, it becomes and just a solid piece in there and uh, it will keep the, the, the synthetic material that's mostly tied on top from, from coming down below it. Okay. So there we go. We're gonna, and we could cut that length as we're close here. And we're looking for something about in the four inch range. So. We're going to cut this just a bit shorter than that. Turn over. Um, you could tie this with most anything, whatever you like. Um, synthetic wise, I've been using the Steve Ferrars Flash Blend quite a bit. Um, you could tie it with natural materials. Um, yak hair is great. But I like synthetics because they don't carry a lot of water when you pick them up. Um, and so we're trying to get the ends somewhat tapered and we're going to divide that and tie it in on the bottom keeping it on one side of the shank as much as possible. So that you kind of uh, split the hook point. Right. So now and that's tied in on the underside of the hook. Right. And pulling it back just a bit, I'm going to add another drop of thin flex here. Kind of work it into the fibers, pull them back just a bit, 
and set them. So, and, so are, are are those that those few strands? It is is that hardened in order to keep it kind of straight? Keep it, it is. It, it's part of the hook guard, kind of, okay. to keep the gap open here. Okay. That things aren't going to drop below it, and it'll kind of work in with this crystal flash to be the the center point there. Turn back up. We're going to take a little bigger hank of material this time. And so we're trying to get the ends. I'm going to tie this in on top um, a little longer than my bottom piece. Just a bit there. So is this one of those patterns where you try to get kind of a progression from shorter to longer as you go up? It is. You can trim it, but um, it's nicer to have the taper kind of built into those fibers or some people tie this down here I, I like it not this as I fold it over the piece I'm folding over I'm not gonna tie it down I'm gonna tie in front of it the okay. next hank of hair and that'll push it back um, that lets me build up more of a, a curve at the front here um, I'm going to trim this again a little longer than the previous one. So. Working it down. You can see as it comes back a little longer. And if you want, you could add a, a drop or so of uh, your height. Drop or two of magic and squeezing it um, these fish have a thin profile side to side so I'm kind of squeezing it holding it up a bit working that into them and hitting it with the light and voila so are, I guess some bait fish are more round right and this one is more this guy is compressed. Um, pretty compressed front to back um, kind of a leaf shape that we're looking for in, in the body, um, but pretty pretty narrow side to side. So we're going to add another little shank of white here. Continue building this up. Um, again, a little bit longer than the one previously. Do you use a ruler? to get your length right or do you have a sample on your desk or do you just um, have to do it by instinct? Pretty much a sample to look at. Um, you know this three aught hook I could tie it probably down to two inches and maybe as long as five inches. Um, I think these these herring will get up to seven inches. I've never seen them that big. Um, and that's the thing is is getting the the size of the herring so i'll try to have in my box um, anywhere from two to five six inches um, covered so here we go so that's tied in um, again i'm going to trim this back a bit and that's it for the white um, Next there's, um, the sardina has a pale yellow band underneath the, the back. Um, I found what works good for that is this EP fiber, um, kind of an antique gold color here, tannish gold. Um, and that's, you know, sardinas can be different in different places. Um, when they're in the bait well for a while, they'll get stressed out and become really pale sometimes. Um, other times they'll look very bold, vivid colors, um, very silvery. So, um, there we're... So it so sounds like you're saying that the, that the fish will actually key in on the color of the bait that Amazingly, they do. Um, you know, we've had days, and, and I can't tell you why, but, you know, a certain pattern, a certain color will really make a big difference. Um, and usually we've found less flash is better. Um, so 
So again, I'm working a little bit of this uh, flex cement in there. Thin flex. And just working it back. And like most fish, most bait fish, darker back. Um, this is actually Ferrars blend where I've pulled, um, I think it's called um, Slinky Flash. Or fl flash and Slinky. Flash and Slinky. And I've actually pulled all the flash out of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you do what you got to do. Now, you know, so that your tie-in technique, you're not folding this back. No. Quick whip finish on this side. How close are these fish to the boat? Are they 30 feet away? Um, 20? Yeah. It, at times they'll be too close and other times they'll stay out of your best cast range. Um, I'm going to pull this out of the vise to get these eyes attached. Things have sure come a long way with these UV cure resins. They yeah, have it really changed uh, a lot of what we do. Would a thicker material be easier to, easier to use at this point? It might be if if you're really uh, putting on big eyes and you have big voids to fill between them, but. I don't mind putting on a couple of applications and building it up. Then I kind of feel like each one's cured and it's making a pretty solid fly. Um, these get chewed on a lot and um, nothing worse than be changing flies, putting on a fresh fly when a fish shows. So um, that's pretty much it. I'll trim it a little to shape here. You're trying to leave the green, the back, the longest fibers. The longest fibers and kind of looking for that leaf shape so spread it out a bit. Now tell me about that spot you put on it at some point. Um, the sardinas have a false eye and uh, so and and it shows up you'll see it on the bait real easily um, and so we'll take a magic marker and just put a put a false eye on the back behind it there um, this one's a little is a when you say magic marker you mean like a sharpie or a something sharpie like that? yep yep works great That's it, basically, a sardina. I'd probably fill this out a little more on the head and put another coat or two to make it really secure, but uh, real simple streamer pattern, um, really effective. That's great, Guy. Hey, thank Have you fun. very much. I you, appreciate it. You bet. <laughs>